CataractCoach.com, off-axis FACO incisions, and Torak IOLs. If you're going to make your incision off-axis, let me teach you a few pearls here. So this patient has a steep axis of about 120 degrees, right about where I made that presentesis. There are also some marks on the cornea at that exact meridian. So anesthetic going inside the eye here. Now, if I wanted to be on axis, I could just make your main fake incision right there at 120. Switch to my left hand and do everything. But if I want to stick with my right hand, I could make the incision at about 30 degrees, which will be helpful because that's about 9 degrees away. And that's kind of what we're doing here. Pretty close to that. Maybe a little shy of it. But notice the diamond. Small diamond. I'm going to try and make a small incision. 2.2 to 2.4 millimeters wide. And notice the incision. Nicking limbal vessels and a good longer tunnel length. Why is that? I want my incision to be as astigmatically neutral as possible, or astigmatically invisible as possible, because I don't want to change the magnitude or direction of the astigmatism. So remember, if you are making your phaco incision on axis or nine degrees off axis, you will change the magnitude of the astigmatism. On axis, you'll decrease it. Nine degrees away from the axis, you'll um, increase it. But the challenge is if you make an oblique incision, so it's not on the axis, it's not 90 degrees away from it, you can also change not only the magnitude, but also the direction of the astigmatism. And you don't want to have to calculate for that because it's not that predictable. It's quite variable. Remember, when you make that incision in the eye, what factors affect how much astigmatism it induces? Well, yes, the width of the incision is one. The tunnel length is another one. The anatomy, the construction, the architecture of the incision also play a role. But what about patient age? We know that in older eyes with a less elastic cornea, that incision is going to have more of an astigmatic effect. Compared to younger eyes with a more elastic cornea, it'll have less effect, right? Also keep in mind corneal size. What if it's a tiny eye with a 11 millimeter white to white compared to a big eye with a 13 millimeter white to white? Now, all of a sudden, that small incision is a lot bigger, comparatively speaking, in an eye that has a 11 millimeter corneal diameter, and it's a lot smaller in proportion with an eye with a 13 millimeter corneal diameter. So again, remember, the arc length of that incision in degrees can change depending on the patient's anatomy, the patient's corneal diameter. So there's so many uh, roles that are involved in determining astigmatic effect of an incision that it's not as predictable as we would like. And so when you're using your online calculator and you put in, yes, you anticipate it'll cause a quarter diopter or a half diopter flattening every time, that may not be realistic. And that's why I always encourage you to try and make your incision on the steep axis if you can, or 90 degrees away from it on the flat axis if you can, as a, and instead avoid the off axis. So here, where it is slightly off axis, not quite at 30 degrees, not quite 90 degrees away, it's probably only 80 degrees away. Again, I've taken time to ensure that I have an incision that is as astigmatically neutral as possible. So again, factors to make your incision as astigmatically neutral as possible. Number one, start at the way periphery, periphery right there at the limbal edge, where you want to barely nick the limbal vessels. Number two, use a narrower incision. A 2.2 or 2.4 incision is going to have less astigmatic effect than a 2.8 incision. Another factor here is tunnel length. Make sure the tunnel length of the incision is appropriate. So you want a little bit on the longer side for the tunnel length. And then good architecture where the roof and the floor of the incision are about the same. So here's the monofocal torque lens being placed in the capsule bag. You can see the torque marks it on the IOL. And we're just going to get that cleaned up here a little bit and centered. I can use that chopper to polish the underservice of the anterior capsule rim too. And so now going in with the IA probe, looks like this is also a, a toric extended up the focus lens. So getting the viscoelastic out, very important for a toric lens. Let's get all the OVD or viscoelastic out from behind the lens. You want that IOL optic to sit directly on the posterior capsule. You do not want to have a layer of viscoelastic there, which will lubricate it and allow it to rotate out of position. So here, getting those marks lined up, you can see the three dots on the torque lens at each side. It's also being lined up with those marks on the cornea. You can see the corneal marks as well, and we'll get that beautifully lined up. You can also use interoperative guidance systems here to help get that even better aligned. All these things are possibilities. The blue, uh, the dark ink marks on the cornea are just safety marks, just to be sure. The cornea's already been marked, but just to have another reference point in case. 
At the end here, you can see nicely positioned lens lined up beautifully with the toric marks. The central EDOF element is beautifully lined up with those Purkinje images. And that's a pretty good overlap of the Rexus on top of the optic and then sealing up the incision and we'll call it a day.